Like. But if I'm Mark Ellis, sooner or later I'll find a podcast to put on this feed. <laughs> hey guys, what's going on? It is the Christian Harloff Show or podcast. It is episode number four. Very excited to be back here. Very, very happy that you guys have been enjoying this show. Um, I've enjoyed doing it. We've had some cool guests on. So, man, what a downgrade this week. We are joined by the former editor-in-chief of Schmoesnote.com, and he is the reigning movie trivia Schmodown champion and a very good buddy of mine. It is Mark Yodi Riley. <laughs> I don't, need to do that. I don't need to do that? Okay. Well, hello, Christian. I will try not to bring this podcast down into the dumps. Well, it's, um, it's nice your, to have you. Well, it. well, thank you for having me. Uh, a lot of uh, nice Schmovo fans were tagging me on Twitter to get over here. That you should be doing this. Yeah, because, well, you know, this is the thing is that uh, we're just going to have a conversation. We're going to shoot the shit. We're going to find out. I mean, I know too much about you anyway, but the fans don't know enough. <laughs> I know, right? So we'll get into things, and, you know, if you want to talk about things, great. If you don't want to talk about it, you say next question. Okay, good. I'm gonna, but I'm going to pressure you anyway. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so, so when was the first time you got laid? <sighs> next question. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> last week. First time last week. Yeah, yeah. It, was a, it was a good one. Did yeah. you crush? Did I crush? But, uh, did you do well in, in, in high school? In or high school? Did, or did you do well in college? When did you start to? Because as far as I've known, you always done well with the ladies. Well, thank you. Um, high school, no. I had a girlfriend. Well, I've seen the ladies. I mean, besides the, the current girlfriend, I mean, right, right, not yeah. too great. Not too great. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. Um, I'm kidding. <laughs> She's always done very well. And so were you, where did it come from? Did it come from uh, confidence building later on in life? It was later on in life, yeah. High school was, I had my girlfriend uh, for years, okay. all through high school. And then first year in college, we broke up, and I was kind of shy and just kind of getting my feet. So I dated and whatnot, but then it wasn't until I got out of college that yeah. I was really like, okay, I'm, you know, who cares? Yeah. You know, I'm gonna talk, so, if I like a girl, I'm going to talk to her. So, it, but in high school, though, were you, you more shy? Yeah, I was very shy. Really? Yeah, and I had my girlfriend, and she was, like, we were the good kids. Okay. Like, we were... Um, you know, she was like wanted to, you know, wait till marriage right. kind of thing. And you were and okay with that at the time? Just <laughs> grab a sock and run to the closet. Yeah, at the time yeah. I was. Well, no, I wasn't okay with it at no, the time. No, if we're gonna be completely honest. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was pushing. Did you lose your mind? I did. Yeah, yeah. but we finally did it. It finally happened. Okay. And so you were like was, 16, and that was my 15, first. 16? I was. Uh, yeah, I was driving, so I was 16. You were yeah. 16. Okay, yeah. so that, I mean that's that's average. It's pretty good. Yeah, so, right? so you then when you're when you're in school and you're, you said you were you guys were the good kids. So sure. you were. It was just more about hanging out with your lady. You were were you in theater and stuff? Because a lot of people may not know this about you that you were you were pursuing acting for a very long time. Yeah, and it started in high school, okay. and that's where I met my my girlfriend okay. in high school. Was we were doing it's one of those things. I was Danny, she was Sandy, we did Grease. And that's how you met? That's how we oh, met. Oh, got it. Yeah, yeah. So How we, cliche. It was very cliche, it was very cute. That was that was our romanticism, you know. We were right. like, oh, and we're going to get married too, which, come on, it's high school. But you're you think that you convinced yourself it's going to happen, Oh right? my God, we had the date planned and everything. Really? I was like, this is ridiculous. Now, now where I'm sitting, years later, I look back at that little dipshit and I'm like come on dude <laughs> but are you but I've known you so you're, you're a guy you're a very passionate dude and you're very you're a romantic at our exactly so but I mean do you still find yourself maybe not to that extreme but do you still find yourself like doing stuff like that to where you just you you may I don't know if you over romanticize things or maybe you kind of see things to where you go this is definitely gonna happen this is the most amazing thing and sometimes you go well maybe if I tune it back a little bit with everything yeah yeah I mean I'm not anymore I'm I'm a lot more I think world weary just seasoned, um, aware that, you know, things are what they are. Just say it, we're fucking old. We're fucking old. Yeah. 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 I mean, I used to be like, and we, we might get to this, but when we were working on the He-Man script, yeah. in my mind, the romanticism in my mind that was going to happen, I mean, we're, we're in a, a Malibu home right now, right. having done the eighth sequel. Right. And then we're also writing the Star Wars movie because that launched the careers. I but mean, does that help you though, as like a creator, as a writer, like someone who, you know, maybe you have to romanticize these things in order to get that imagination going? Yeah, you know, I think it's fine to romanticize. I think it's fun to be positive, but I also think that there's something that you need to do when you are working in this business, and even with relationships and stuff. I think it's important to remember that you got to have one foot on the ground and then 
maybe have one foot in the cloud, you know? Right. Have a nice balance. For me, it's just always like, I would, at least for Hollywood and career and everything, to romanticize about, I would go from like, well, I'm writing this script right now to like accepting my Oscar. Right. So it's like, there's a lot of steps in between that. So if you start believing that in your mind, right. you can be so let down for just the smallest of, of uh, setbacks. Right. So, you know, I'm still romantic. I still like to romanticize and be positive and whatnot. But yeah, I'm old. We've well, been around the block now. Yeah, we kid about that too. But we're still pretty. I mean, we got we got a lot left in the tank. And I say that the other thing though is, you kind of fell into this business the same way that I did, um, because yeah. we were both on the path to kind of doing feature films. So like you said, you went from so you take us through this. So you started like you said as an actor. Yeah. Um, and then you went from actor to pursuing writing. Then you mm-hmm. did production, and then you fell into this space too, yeah. to where now this is kind of seems like this seems like the perfect career choice for you. Like, yeah. what, can you kind of give us that road? Yeah. So I mean, I did. I, I graduated college. I was a theater major, and I did a minor in cinema. Um, so I got I got to do some production. I got to do some writing and all that kind of stuff. But it was mostly based in in acting. So when I got out of college, I was pounding the pavement like. A lot of actors will do. I got the agent. I did General did Hospital. Did you live in Orange County? Or did you live here? No, I lived in L.A. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was in L.A. right when I got out of college. So did the all the auditions, did a PlayStation commercial, did a General Hospital spot, and I hated it. I hated running around the trying auditioning? to... Yeah. Yeah. And just, it wasn't like me. I hate, me. I hate auditioning. I like being in the role and doing that stuff with the auditioning process. I, it drove me away from it. Yeah, and that's what, I mean, It and you have to jump through so many hoops. And I mean, I can't tell you how many classes I took, yeah. how many headshots I got. And it's not very creative. And I know, and I have great respect for people. And I have so many friends in this business now that are doing it and very successful or some form of success or still doing it, what have you. For me, it's just, I wasn't being creative. And maybe that's why... I turned to writing because I needed something to do. And I was always, always, always wanting to write. And I wrote when I was in high school. I wrote, I just kind of did it on the side. Right. That's when I started to do it. When I realized that acting for me wasn't as rewarding. You weren't as, I you weren't as passionate about it at this no, point. No, right? I was like, I was like, you know, this is fine. But I love, I, I started to say this. I love that I could get judged more by a piece of work in a screenplay than I could by just a headshot. Right. Because that's what they do as an yes, actor. Yes. They yes, look at that no, headshot. No. Yeah. And they yeah. Go, they judge you just on the way you look. Right. They barely look at the at the resume on the back. Right. And the only way that you'll get really some of the parts that you really want is you gotta do all these other parts and then you get judged by that. And it, it just there was a disconnect for me. Right. So I stopped doing that. I started writing. Then that led to you know, I needed. I, I made a short film that I wrote. When did you start writing? What 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 year was that? Do you think? No, it was you, like ninety four. Ninety four is when you said I'm I'm going straight into writing. That's what I want. That was do. when I graduated college. Oh, no, right. no, 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 no. That's when I graduated high school in ninety four. So I started writing in ninety four. I graduated high school and I had like something to write, like right. you know, my American Pie. Right. It was shitty. I wrote it on some legal pad and then. Right. But when I really started writing was ninety eight. When I said this is what I want to do because I had just gotten out of college okay. in ninety eight. Was auditioning. Okay. Six months later, I was like, you know what? I'm going to start writing and see what right, happens. Right. So that's that's led me to taking some classes for writing, taking <laughs> some, doing some production, doing some short films, and then that led to a production job on Fat Actress on Showtime. Right with Christy Alley. With Christy Alley. And, and that was what 2003. That was two. No, that was. God, when was that? Maybe that was 2004. My God. You, or in I, that area. Yeah, it was yeah. like 2002, because I we went Because we went through a different kind of uh, road, you and I, um, yeah. to where, because we both, we met, so people, if you didn't know the story, Mark and I met in 2000, uh, yeah. working at California Pizza Kitchen. We yes, both, we did. There was a restaurant that opened up at in Santa Monica, and it's still there to this day, actually. Um, and we... We were there for the opening of that restaurant. Yeah. And I remember, and you you came over from, didn't you come over from the Burbank location? I came over from the Brentwood. From the Brentwood location. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Because they were, I had left to go do, to stay in Paris to do the Star Wars trilogy. Yeah. That's when I was still kind of acting. Right. Um, I was still hovering around that, but for the Star Wars play, it was like, oh, this is through alumni at USC. I went and did that. And before I left, I said, can I come back? 
to the new store because I need a job, and I right, did. So right. and that's where we met. Okay, and we met there, and we, myself, you, Brett Sheridan, who the yep. fans are now familiar with, we all worked there, kind of did some stuff. I had left for a little bit of a break, and I went on to write for the WWE at that time, kind of came back, and I don't know how we all kept in touch because we we definitely hung out and went drinking a lot during those days. Oh, yeah. So we, yeah, we, yeah. it was like me, you, and Brett really – Hit it off and had a bunch of kind of crazy partying times, yep. many times. Many times. And then I think it was like 2002. I don't, yeah, I'm wondering like how we, because you used to come to my comedy shows. You'd come to mm-hmm. the shows and we, we, and then we found out that we actually lived down the block from one another, yep. which was, yep. I lived on Blackburn. And I and lived on Blackburn. Blackburn too. So then, then yeah. so then that, you know, like I said, we run in similar circles. You just never remember kind of how the conversations came up about writing and things. I know that we worked on sketch stuff. We were going to work on sketch. Me, yeah, you and Brett were going to do a sketch show. Because you started a whole, like we met, I remember we met at some guy's apartment in Beverly Hills to do this sketch thing because I was writing. Right. So you knew I was writing. Right. Because then I don't know where it turned, but that was when I remember, you remember Mar- Archangel? Of course, that yeah. Script? That's that was the one I read. That I, I mean, I, I that's when I started saying, "Oh, this guy can write." And I started, yeah, putting around to it. Yeah, that was the one that that then started off like where we would keep in touch professionally. I because I always remember you reading that. So. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's uh, that's kind of how Riley and I started working creatively mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. And then if we kind of fast forward into people have heard me talk about like the He Man thing, and then right. So with you, so I had read Ar- Archangel because. I don't know. I think you turned it into one of your bosses there. I turned. Like you I mean, say I, you tried. I, it. It I was showed it. It was Village Road, Road Show. Show. When that I was, was working at Village Road Show, which was this company where I started interning at, and then you started eventually yep. interning there too. But I was, um, I was, I had read that, gave it to my buddy Fred Klein at the time, and said, "This guy really, he he can write." And then this whole thing happened with He-Man Masters of the Universe. Is that yeah. So if you don't know what Turnaround is, basically John Woo had this version of He-Man, which was just horrendous. Oh, my like God. He-Man and Tila were getting cheeseburgers, and it was, I mean, I'm not even kidding. That's really what it was. And I remember reading it, they're saying it was in Turnaround, meaning that it was open if any other studio wanted to buy it. Yeah. But you read this script, and nobody thought it could be anything. And I always thought, and I still do think, that He-Man Masters of the Universe could work perfect as Star Wars meets Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Me- mixing fantasy and sci-fi kind of together, very similar to, again, what Star Wars did, but giving it that, that Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings feel. Yeah, and taking it seriously. Take, not looking at the toys, but looking at the mythology and actually doing it as a good story. And that was the problem. That was, that was the uphill battle, was yeah. that people thought that you couldn't take this serious because it had a guy in a purple pants and, and a tiger, and they didn't really they, they didn't pay attention to like the comics that had come out before, and even right. the 2002 series, which had come out, it really could be something. And then you and I talked about it, and I said, dude, I think that we could probably pitch something if yeah. we came up with a good idea. So you and I hammered out this story mm-hmm. and really figured out this thing, and then you wrote this amazing treatment. Yeah, that was fun. You started with, I'm sending you this script, read this because we can do better right like i remember you telling me that and then i remember reading it and he man said at one point are you high yeah to somebody so we yeah. were like yeah because it was the same kind of thing we we loved the old cartoon and the toys and all that stuff but we knew that there was a story there yeah, so. right and so then the story basically goes like this this particular we we had started taking this around we got it to mattel and mattel thought that that it was, you know, the mythology was changed a little bit, and they wanted mm-hmm. to kind of move around with some stuff, but we needed to still try to find some backing. So what I said, I took it again to our buddy over at Village Roadshow, Fred Klein, and he said, look, I get this. I understand this. I just don't know if I can get Dana, who was his boss at the time, to get on board with this. So yep. I'll try, mm-hmm. but you might want to go to other places too. Mm-hmm. So at the time, there was this um, – this, Shithound that was working over at Legendary, who's not there anymore. <laughs> and I went to him, and you know, and and I said to the dude, I was like, "Hey, man, you take a look and and read this thing." And he and he did. And my buddy Adam Winkleman and I yeah. went. We and we and we gave it to him, and he, and he read it over. And he like he he was reading. It, and it was very interesting. It's very interesting. I kind of let me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he thought about it for a bit. And he was totally on board with the idea of doing this and bringing it to somebody over to his the higher ups over at Legendary when they were still with Warner Brothers. And then, mm-hmm. fast forward to like a week later, he's like, oh, guys, you know, I just want to have this meeting and let you guys, we're doing Conan, uh, a remake of that, so it's a little too similar, uh, so I don't think we're going to be able to do it with you guys. And I was like, totally get it. That's yeah. cool. No that's, worries. I that's have the business. So we'll figure something out. So fast forward to now Matt Jennison and Strickland. 
Mm, yeah. You remember those? So those guys, they were, um, Jenison and Strickland were, had gotten that Wonder Woman story picked up. Right. And at Silver. At, right? at, well, they were interns with me. Well, Matt was. Matt Jenison was, was an intern with me. And he called me up when I was working at Silver. He's like, look, dude, I know that. You, you know, you probably get submissions all the time, but I'm pretty sure that my partner and I wrote a pretty great Wonder Woman script. Mm. And to be honest, I'm like, okay. I'm like, every time someone says, I wrote a pretty great thing. It's a, but, sure. but I like the guy, and I'm like, I'll read it. And it was, I mean, amazing. Oh, was, yeah, I read it. You gave it to me, it and was, I read it. It yeah, was amazing. It was everything that Captain America turned out to be. Exactly, a the, period piece Wonder Woman. Yes, and they, I mean, and so long story short is that they bought, that these guys got managers and agents off that thing, and Susan Downey, you know, Robert Downey Jr.'s wife, who was running Silver's company, she liked it, Warner Brothers bought it, this whole thing. So the reason, the way this ties into the He-Man thing was we like, well, we got Janice and Strickland, there's all this heat on them right now, let's get them in and talk to them about He-Man, because at this point, Naveed McElargy, if you guys are watching Schmoes long enough, you're familiar with that name yep. he was like yeah we can we can we can make this work so we'll take riley's treatment we'll work then we get to for the first part mattel wants to scrap riley's treatment they yep. don't they, they don't want, like it they didn't want riley's treatment they didn't like the mythology of it and they wanted to go a whole new direction with yep. it. yep so that's a conversation that i have to have with riley to yeah. which to be honest handled it like a pro so i get it's a business it yeah. really sucks no and i had somebody trevor egnelson yeah uh, was kind of helping me at that time. He was kind of like repping me in, in pocket, I would say, as a manager. And he, yeah, we both, we all talked about him. I was like, yeah, that's what happens. Yeah. You know, I get it. And, and that, But that's, at that point, that's got to be a bit of a, because then the, the, the mansion in Malibu starts to, the wall starts to chip and it's, it's the money what bit. I, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is what I come around to. Right. I had jumped five places in my head with that, saying that there was going to be like something like the movie or writing the script. And it's like, when that all goes away, just by some, like, as simple as that. Nope, we don't like it, so we're moving on. Right. Then you're like, you get bummed. So I was bummed. It was, I mean, it was, it sucked. You, we put a lot of work in We put that so thing. much. So that's that's why, you know, the end of this, is, I want to talk to Riley more about this and not make this about the He-Man story, but just to give everybody, not to leave them hanging on how the story ends. Sure. Is that then, after Jenison and Strickland now are brought in to work on a new treatment and a new um, thing that Mattel is going to like, then we get a phone call that, um, Justin Marks, who yep. just wrote Jungle Book, by the way, and yep. Crush It, who's an amazing writer and a really good stand-up dude, good guy, has just written a new treatment for Masters of the Universe that they've already reached out to Mattel that Mattel likes, and mm -hmm. that they want to partner up with Silver to do, because they know that we were looking into it. Yeah. And the, re <laughs> the way that Justin Marks was brought attention to this, the treatment that he was brought, was from this guy over at Legendary yeah. that we pitched. This scumbag oh, yeah. went over who was friends with, with Justin and, went and, and basically pitched him Riley's thing and, and our thing and our take on it. And they came up. And this is, again, Justin, Justin Marks came up with his own take and really made it his own, and it was Justin's version of this story. Yeah. And, I, I, and I've said it since then, and I'll say it now. Justin Marks is a good stand-up dude, a really good guy, but this guy... Yeah, so I, uh, like took credit for it. Just totally went leapt over both myself, Adam, and you, mm -hmm. and just showed me what Hollywood was. I ran out the door because the legendary was was right down the thing. Oh, that's I right. ran out the door to go run down there because I'm going back <laughs> into my queen's mentality at this point. And <laughs> Naveed grabs me by the the neck and he's like, "I get it, dude. I get it. Sit down." <laughs> Naveed had to calm me down, and like I was just like, "That's that's how we deal with the rats." And he's like, "No, not not in Hollywood, man." So he's like, "This is gonna happen. Sit down." So yeah. that was my I was crash course 101. But we all went through that together. Um, but that wasn't the end of you and I working together. Nope, that was not. Yeah. Um, so let's let's. So what happened then? So you leave, so you leave. You so you're still doing writing at that point, mm -hmm. but around 2000 you're working. So the production angle, because you went through. What I've noticed about you recently is that you have gone from a place like you. We used to laugh about it, like yeah, at rant, ranting Riley and anger. Like you, you would flip out at when. The kick, 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 punch, punch, like on the car. Like, we got to tell that story. Can you tell that story, please? Well, that's just, that's, that's back in the days of Toad Hop. This is Toad Hop. Yeah, no, we come out, uh, we come out after a show one night, and there's this guy who's just fucking hammered. Yeah. Just hammered. In his car driving, yeah. In his car driving is trying to park, parallel park in between two cars at a red, on a red curb. So yeah. it's the, you know, the fire lane, and there's parking spots. Well, this guy <laughs> tries to fit in there, not only illegally, drunk, but then he runs into my car. And the car in front of him. And the car in front yeah. of him. And I go, what the hell? <laughs> he hit my car. I go, what the hell are you doing, dude? And he goes, oh, uh, 
oh, no, no, sorry, dude. And then he puts it in a drive, and he runs into my car again after I tell him. And so, I, so Riley yeah. gives it a He-Man kick, <laughs> punch, kick, kick, punch, punch. And the guy just looks over and just drives away, like, oh, yeah. straight out of his mind. And Tom Finstock and I are, are looking, and we used to call it kick, kick, punch, punch. <laughs> but you, but you also, awesome. you would, but you... At that time, I don't know if that same that same thing happened right today. Mm-hmm. I don't think you would have done kick, kick, punch, punch. I think you're in a different place. Yeah, I am. I mean, well, you used to fly up like you were. You would go into the. You're not as angry as you used to be. I'm not as angry as I used to be. <laughs> I again, age. It yeah. just kind of settles you. After I hit uh, the big at four o, good yeah. lord, I was like, should, do I say it? Yeah, I was just like, eh, I don't know. But there will be times. I'm just, I don't show it as much anymore because now I don't really care as much. But right. there are times that if that guy did that now, I would still do it. But where where did that, did that, because we all get to a place, especially for struggling actors, writers, when. God, that's a good point. When you're not working yeah. and whatever's happening in our personal lives, it can fester. It and can you, absolutely. You know, and I seem, and, and it seemed to me at times, like it never affected your work, but like no. it seems to me you could fly off the handle really quick. We don't. We can't joke about Angry Riley anymore because we don't see it anymore. <laughs> no, no. But yeah, I think you're on to something. I think there was such a long period of struggle that where it, it was like the, it's so many highs, so many lows that I would just vent by like right. kick, kick, punch, punch guy. That guy, fight. not only that, I mean, he, he dented my car. Right. So and you I'm dented gonna, his. I'm going to take, I'm <laughs> look, and right. this guy, oh shit. And he took Yeah, his. Drove I off. forgot about yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, he just drove off, man. He was like, you know, nothing to do with anger. Right? That guy was so drunk too. Yeah, he I was, was like, God. Hopefully, he made it home okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. That, that, yeah, everything's mellowed out a lot. I think I'm just a lot happier with just. I'm at peace with everything right. that what's going on. I mean, I still have things I want to do. I'm still writing all these great things that I like to do. I mean, I think you know, as a kid, I had I had a temper. I I was right. like, you know. I would get into trouble with like my temper with like getting in fights with like yelling screaming matches. Not, not like fist not fist fights or right. anything. What, but. Where's the anger come from? What was it? Was it frustration? Yeah. Like what, what frustration? Was it? I don't know. It's a you're an emotional guy. Yeah, I'm a passionate guy, so it would come out like that. Right. So I would like look. I and we've been through this too. Like yeah. I look like I will yell and scream if I believe I'm being either like I need to stick up right. or defend or argue or whatever it may be, passionate wise. And then once that's done, it's like, oh, good. You're done. Move Over, on. Right. Yeah. So I don't know where it came from. I think my dad has a temper. Right. I've seen my and dad do the... things. Oh, yeah. It's the same thing. He'll just like all of a sudden, God damn it. And right. Just like. Just lose it. Like, just oh, lose it. Like, yeah, that's, that's Are you full Irish? Oh, yeah. I'm full, full I- Irish. Well, I'm Irish. And then there's a little bit of German and English on my mother's side. All right. But that's why you like the wine so much. No, I guess so, yeah. I love, love the wine. wine. Oh, big yeah. wine guy, this guy. I'm a big, huge wine guy. Yeah. That's when I met Julie and she liked wine. My girlfriend. Your lady. Just, we just love to have a glass of wine every night. Well, so. you bring up you bring up your lady here. And, sure. And I think that one of the things, uh, again, what I've noticed over the last year is the, the mellowness and the calm has come from Julie, for sure. Uh, yeah. It's like that you guys are, are in tune with each other. Sure. Now, people don't realize this. You go back in the archives to do it the, in, let's bring it and phase two yep. of the show you appeared on the show with someone who was not julie nope it was your ex-wife my ex-wife still married at the time yes i was married did that have a lot to do with the anger oh my god yeah <laughs> that was... it sure did it um, sure did look, yeah. sometimes two people aren't right for each other D- yeah and we were not right, right. for each other yeah. absolutely not right I, was I that mean, always the case you know Unfortunately, I thought we were right for each yeah. other, but then we learned. Pr- I learned very quickly that you know, we talk about our career. Yeah. We made a movie together. Okay. That was why we were on your podcast. Was that a mistake? Did that was that was that? No, of, I'm no. glad we made the movie okay. as fast as we did because we basically got married, and then that September we got married in July. That following September, we were already working on the the movie. Okay, um, a movie I wrote. She produced it. She was in it. Right. We produced it together, and it just I knew. Right away with that movie, she was looking for career stuff. I I don't she know why she career, she was very career driven. Didn't yeah. really want to be in a marriage. I don't th- I don't know why she wanted to get married. Okay, and then so, you guys figured that out. Yeah, I figured that out. Like probably that following November, I went. Oh, I made a horrible mistake. Right, I did. How I, long were you married? We were only married a few months. Or it was I was married July, and by November, I'll always remember this. I always say it. I remember going to sleep one night 
after having a fight with her, and it was over money, career, all these right. things where you're married, you've been married now for a long time. Yeah. You know that when you, you have to make grown up decisions. You have to sit down and go, this is our budget. You have to sit down and go, we can't spend this, but we can spend this. You have to do these things. I have to do this for my career. You have to do this for your career. Whatever it may be, you have these conversations. Right. Very, very early on that November, after a July marriage, she was, nope, it's my way or the highway. Mm. I mean, that's what it came down to. And I was like, oh, fuck, I made a horrible decision. Right. So what do we do? We go and make a movie because that's what you do. Right. Jesus yeah. Christ. So that that was probably the hardest thing I've ever been through. One of my most rewarding was having the movie in the can and done and selling right, it. Right, but and, going into the midst of divorces. That you had to, so wait, so you, so you were married for less than a year, but you guys were together for how long? Well, we were, we were together for a year before we were engaged, uh, uh, together another year. Uh, during engagement and then married. So we were married two years later. Two years later. So you're together. Okay. So you're together for about two years or something? And so? then, yeah, two years, married. So all in all, I think it was like five years and then out. Okay. Because we were married for about two and a half years right. before I got out of right. it. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, I my, my wife and, uh, and and your ex-wife and you and me, we would always, we used to go out a lot together and stuff yeah. too. And yeah. Like, it's, like, it's funny because you never really see, and this is anything, you never really see what's going on behind closed doors because it was, it was like oh it was a great time we had a good time it was a sure. lot of fun and then you realize that like you said there's just you just realize that two people maybe aren't you, you realize this is not the one for me and you're able to split ties and say it's time for me to kind of go on my way yep. and you did that and I think for me knowing you so long now coming on 16 years or whatever it is is that you can see that shift and your whole your whole spirit kind of changed yeah and because you don't have kids Nope. And so that that's always easier too. Thank God we didn't have kids. Yeah. Both just wasn't ready for you guys. You guys no, it just no. that, that's not that that would have made it so much more difficult. Yep. And you get out now and then so at that time, then here comes the Schmo show. Yeah, no, you got the Schmo's show literally saved me. Because I was in a shitty place at after that my, time. Oh right. yeah, dude. I mean you get divorced, I don't care who you are. I did love the girl. Right. You know. It was a big moment in my life that I had to deal with getting out of that relationship. So I was going through, man, I was like drifting, couldn't really, you know, I was looking for stable work. That was when you're like, oh yeah, we're st like the podcast was getting bigger. Now you were at Toad Hop. I came on a couple times when I was over at Universal and then when it moved over to the... You were one of our first guests when we did it when it was just me. It was similar to how we're doing this show right now. It was yeah, just me yeah. and Mark and you and my, my couch before my daughter was even born. Exactly. And we were talking about X-Men movies. So yeah, you guys yeah, can actually right. go back and listen. If You can find that on YouTube. But you can go to uh, phase one of the podcast and Riley was one of our very first. But, yep. so, but you knew of the schmoes and what we were doing for a long time. Yes, yes. So we were... I mean, reviews and did all the review. Oh yeah, and I was following you, um, dude. We were in the car, speaking of my ex. When we were, we were all going to the beach one time. Right. That's when you floated Schmo's No to me. You're right. like, what do you think of Schmo's No? The name. Yeah. And I was like, that's you know, and that's like I, I've been around this for so long, knowing you as a, as a friend and hearing about this and then seeing it put into action. Right. Which we have had many conversations about uh, that and what you guys were doing to build your brand, to get it all out there, you know. I knew people in my life that would look at that and go, what are they doing, this is bugging me. I can't believe there's another video that I can't watch and blah, 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 blah. and it's like, hey, if you don't like it, don't watch it. Right. But I watched you build that brand to where it is now. So then when you fast forward a couple years after my divorce, you're like, hey, why don't you show up? Come, come, why don't you come over, Thursday night we're doing this show. Right. I met Kenny, I met Josh McCuga, and the rest is history. Yeah, well, that's, and that's, I'm very curious too. Is remember, do you remember what your, what your first, not, not the, not the X Men show, but like when you came on the Toad Hop Phase Three, like, do you remember what your first one was? I don't. Yeah. I don't remember what the first show was. Do you remember like kind of how you felt like vibe wise when you were in it? And like, what, what made you say, because like, you know, until recently we weren't really, so this we weren't really able to pay anybody like for a no, long time. No. You know, even that the running joke with Andy over there was like, oh, at least I pay my people. Right. Um, but now, now we're able to do that over here too. That took a while to get to. Yeah. So a lot of the Schmoes crew was doing it because they liked being there. We just liked being there. Yeah. And all I remember about the first show I was on, I was like sitting in, off to the side. You would just kind of invite me to 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 you know say something here and there, and then it was like slowly over time. It was like, oh, we're all a part of this now. Like that was with Makuga, that was with right. Kenny. I think Kenny was producing. Kenny came in as a producer, yeah, because Kenny was was kind of doing. 
he had like a side role where he'd come in, co-host sometimes, right. and then Makuga and Kenny had a battle on Twitter. The winner would get to produce the show. That's right. And then Kenny won it, became the producer of the show, mm-hmm. and then you know then we just I remember having that meeting, Mark and I, Ellis and I, and, we're, and I said we should just start putting together like a full crew because then I say to this day we always wanted that Stern type of Howard Stern type of feel to where we had the the crew just very together and feeling mm-hmm. like they're all buddies and, and having we talk about anything at any time and yep. anything can happen and so we pitched Riley and we pitched Makuga and Ken and, and everybody and do you would you remember some moments at Toad Hop that really stood out to you? Like, um, do, well, what, I'm curious to wonder when you said to my, yourself, like, "Yeah, I'm 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 not going to miss it." Because sometimes when you join something, like oh, I did this a couple times, but then you were there every week. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, and I remember uh, with my my ex girlfriend at the time, she we were dating at the time. Uh, one of our good friends, Amy, yeah, yeah, is yeah. like she's we're such good great friends. She was like. I was like, no, I'm going to this. And she's like, what are you doing? Like, she was very supportive. And she's friends with you guys. Yeah. But that was when I realized it was like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to, like, you, you can do what you want on Thursday night. I'm going to be going to this thing because, you know, it's so much fun. But the moment that cemented it was the very first celebrity impression. Yeah. That was that was where it was really, it was either that and the what's the pitch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it was like, I was so like, this is so much fun now. This yeah. is where I want to be. For doing it, and then that's what ultimately led to, you know, launching the site because I went, wait a minute. Well, that's the thing that we get into. Yeah, you, it was so. And the story of the website doesn't really get out there as much as it should. Is that Mark? Uh, it was Mark, Mark, Mark. Ellis and I started our website in 2010 just to kind of have a an IP up there, you know, and yeah. just to, have, yeah. to have it up there. We weren't doing anything with it, and it was Ken. Ken Napsack was like, we got to do something with this site, man. It's like, mm-hmm. you got to do something with it. Like, you want to do more updates and more things. Because we used to do stuff like, you actually used to write articles for the site in like 2010. Yeah. Like, I had, it was you and it was Mike Beatrice. And, mm-hmm. But there was no consistency to it where you guys would write some stuff, blogs, and it was just a way to kind of hear your voices out there. Yeah. Too. And it was fun. It was an avenue. You know, it was great to get it out there because there was a very small contingent of fans even right. back then right where before i was in like knew what twitter was it was like all of a sudden there was like you know there was somebody that was uh uh time lord right. mark aquino was such an old time fan he, i remember him reading one of my riley round tables to his own video right. which right. was really fun i was like wow this is actually something so yeah d- but it was during toad hop and the live show where i'm like wait a minute there's there's a lot of fans here it makes sense to do a website. And right. yeah, Kenny being. Well, yeah, you know. and then, well, then Riley's like, what if we take it into the straight up movie news yep. um, angle? And we're like, well, can we do this? And we sat down, and Joe Ruggiero, the artist formerly known as Shoesy Pants, right. was, um, we, we, he had this scoop about the twins, the solo twins at the time. And, yeah. and we, we went with this, and that's kind of how we launched the site, and we got a lot of traction from it. And, we, and it was kind of like that addictive, it was like an addictive drug. We're it like, was. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> There's, we're getting all, because. Not only did the website benefit from it, the podcast benefited from it. And yeah. we started getting, we started realizing that the the website with the, you know, the website and the show together and breaking these articles, and we started working together. And when I tell you, Mark Riley worked on this site every day at his house. How many hours were you doing it when we first started it? I mean, it was first thing in the morning until seven or eight at night. Right, and so. T- tell me about the tell me about that process as to where it's because it started out. I remember like you were excited, and then eventually the burnout comes. Like yeah, I couldn't sustain it because of you know I needed a full time job. I right. needed money. Yeah, right. but I did put in a lot of time. I would work here and there. I was a personal trainer for a while, so I was able to I was able to go and do that and come back. And so it was a juggling act. But yeah, it was so great. It was so much fun because it was building. The site was building with the the show. You you, you said it. It was like kind of in con, uh, cahoots together. Mm-hmm. So as we were getting bigger, show wise, we could break scoops. We've known enough people where we could break scoops, where we would get a lot of traction. Where I was able to bring in uh, some advertising, you know. And, and now I know enough about it where it's like, oh, you just sign right, up. Right. Well, you say that it was crash course stuff. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. But that was fun. That was really really fun actually because it actually paved the way for. Fuck what I'm doing now. Yeah. So it, it, it was a lot of fun. Met so many good people and found so many good writers right. through it. Um, but yeah, after a while, I mean, a website is so much work. A lot of people don't know how much work it can be. Oh, man. 
my God. But it, yeah, ultimately it's like we all had to go do, well, I had to go find a job, something right. to do. To, but we kept it going. We kept it, even while you had your other job, too, because you were working at Drama 3-4 for yep. a while, yep. which is um, our buddy David Fickus and Bryce Beckham yep. were, um, were doing uh, running their company, and you worked for them for a bit, but you were still able to do Schmoes. But you were able to do that because of your relationship also with Schmoville. Yeah. Like, how, yeah. Talk, talk to us about that. Schmoville, for if people are just joining this podcast and don't know Schmoville, is it's, it's kind of lovingly what we call our audience. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's been a lot of writers and fans that, that, have, that have come your way. And how does Schmoville kind of kept you afloat? Well, it was funny because first I was like, I, I got some, like, I think Shoesy Pants and I, we, we were definitely um, doing all the content. And then through Schmoville and the show, I would get submissions. Like, Schmoville would reach out. I want to write for the site. Certain right. people would send me things. Um, sometimes, there were a couple times where I'm like, nope, I, you know, I don't think I'm ever going to go to Schmoville for this. I think we need to go find another avenue to find writers. And then, you know, sure enough, I ate those words pretty fast. Yeah. There's so many damn talented people in Schmoville. Jeez. I mean, then we had Bat Brown, then we had. Uh, who else was Mike? Mike Holtz, Rachel Cushing, Rachel Cushing, Aaron Parisian. Yeah. Uh, d- 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 God, do I say? Did I say her name right? Is it Parisian, Aaron? Aaron. So um, there were so many that just came my way, and so many people are so willing to be a part of it. It was an extension of Schmoville. It was right uh, to a certain degree. We were covering news, but I was getting these talented people from Schmoville to, you know basically help out with the website right. and everybody knew I mean I would then go work hours as a producer with drama 3 4 and I would just keep an eye out because these people knew how to like I taught them enough right that was what that initial period was of me working on it every day that was getting to know the the design getting to know how to do this getting to know to the writers You're yeah going to school. It's, it's a it's crash course it's really what it was and then so the question people would always ask for me anyways what happened to the site why, why isn't the site still going right and what you got to realize is that mark riley took a full-time job basically as the managing editor over at geek nation right so you were working over there and you were pretty much doing the same duties as kind of what you were doing for smokes.com but just yeah. you just can't for conflict of interest and for oh, yeah. other things you just can't run two sites at the same time no no and we you know it was i was trying to i would kind of have an eye on it in the on the corner but then yeah, after a while it was like no this is what i have to do we all knew it, it was it was amicable we all knew that that's the way the cookie crumbles so i worked with geek nation for a while right so, um yeah. however <laughs> yeah and then well yeah and then we and then we kind of a little bit happened down the road here with well we first of all with the website we had to um, stop doing it because we just didn't have the resources yeah. to do it. We didn't have a Mark Riley. We didn't have so we just we just couldn't run it. Now that's not to say that we're not going to bring Schmozno.com back. We already kind of announced that we're going to do that. Yeah, but it won't it be is. movie news anymore. It's just from being over at Collider now and everything that we're doing, it just doesn't make sense for us to cover movie news. But it's going to be kind of for a Schmoville audience. Yeah, so. well, I'm actually talking to Schmoville. I'm back in the mix with it. You know, dot com is coming back. What are we looking forward to? What, what should they be looking forward to with schmoesno.com now? I mean, you're going it, to, it's, schmoesno.com is going to be just like Schmoville is. It's, it's going to be a place that is fun to visit. Like, mm-hmm. there's going to be great articles, there's going to be editorials, there's going to be, you know, um, comments on the shows, the wonderful memes that are in all of right. Schmoville. Like, we're going to be throwing, it's like, when I said earlier that, Having the writers from Schmoville was an extension of Schmoville. It's going to be even more so with schmoesno.com. Right. And yeah, we'll probably, it won't be breaking news, but if there's a big news piece, we're, one of the writers is going to comment on it. Right. You know, right. they're going to go, wait a minute, Darth Vader's in Rogue One. I have something to say. That's what's going to be personality. great. Personality. There's going to be a lot of personality, yeah. and Schmoville's going to get involved. Right. We're, we're going to have a submission piece where Schmoville can actually go and say, you know what, I want to write about this. And that's what I love about Schmoville is like, there's so many damn talented people there. It's like, we got to get their voices in here. Yeah. That's what Schmoes knows it's going to be. It's going to be great. Well, and that's going to happen soon. Again, if you want to follow Riley at Riley Around, he'll have updates about when that's going down. So then you move over and you come over to Collider. There was an opportunity over here. Oh, and, yeah. And then you're able to take it. Now, you do a lot over here. There's a lot, but it's Jesus, not But it's yeah. not just kind of the behind the scenes, which I definitely want to hear about what you do behind the scenes, but you're doing a lot more on camera too. Yeah. Can you kind of give us a breakdown of kind of what you do daily and, and you know, whether it's on camera stuff, behind the scenes, like just what's a day like at Collider for Riley? Oh, Jesus. Um, Jesus. Well, it's, yeah, it starts at 6.30 in the morning. Okay. 
um, I get up at six thirty and I'm polishing the notes for Movie Talk, right? Because that's that's our live show every day. So I'm Movie Talk is like the flagship show here, obviously. Right. So um, I talk to like later on. Me and Christian are going to be talking about tomorrow's show. So I'm collecting news throughout the day. So for an average day, I've usually done a little bit of work on the on the template on the show notes right. for. Um, for movie talk, I send it to Ray, who's our graphics, our guy, graphics yeah. guy. I send him a rough outline. I go, hey, this is what we're going to be talking about. He starts working on the images. You've seen these images, guys. They're, They're amazing. amazing. Yeah. So Ray gets that. I always want to make sure that he gets a rough outline by 10 o'clock at night so he has a head start. So then at 6.30, I wake up. Um, usually I roll out of bed by 6.45. Uh, then I, I'm looking at the news. I'll either, like today, I texted you in the morning. Hey, Darth Vader, it's right, broke. Right, right, Where do right, we right. put this? Where right. do you want this? I Top story, perfect. So then I redo the outline. I finish it. I, re- I write it all. I get it out by 8.30 in the morning. Then I get ready and I get into the office. We have our pre-production meeting at 10.30. You guys kind of handle it from there because um, you're looking at my outline and what I've written. We go through it with all the hosts, pronunciation issues, blah, blah, blah. We get up. We do the show. Um, then I'll, then I'm on kind of some social media stuff. I take some pictures, making sure it's on Twitter, making sure everybody knows that we're live. I'm tagging these guys so they can retweet it. Then I'm watching the show. I'm collecting all the good moments to give. Then I meet with Perry afterwards. I give it to Perry for best of the week. I go, hey, you got to check out this moment. Check out this moment. She writes it down. Then I move over to our office. I get it all up on Collider.com. I talk to the writers of Collider.com. I go, hey, movie talk is up check it out right we get it out there now it's on dot com you can find it there then like today right after that there's a little bit of time for lunch i have some lunch with the with the peeps then we go into collider heroes same deal now i'm looking at the notes for that i'm making sure everything looks good i'm talking to schnepp he's talking to me about collider heroes what is what does he have on tap who's on the show i make sure okay everything's great get it on youtube um, make sure everybody knows that the video, how to do the video. I give them all the descriptions. Then I put it on .com as well. All the while, I'm looking at news all day. Because then later on today, I'm going to talk to you about that for Movie Talk tomorrow. Right. I'm also collecting, like today, it just happens to be Wednesday. I'm collecting all mailbag stuff. So throwing mailbag, getting ready for this weekend. We're going to start taking everybody's questions, talking about them on the mailbag shows for the weekend. And then... My God, it changes every day. So then later on, I'll be going home and working on the show notes for tomorrow. Well, so do you, Do you like, because there's so much, and so much, obviously, responsibility that you have, too. Yeah. That you came in, because the responsibilities, even though you were used to doing stuff with Schmozone.com and over at Geek Nation, this is significantly different. Oh, from yeah. What, so, but you obviously handle it pretty well. Do you like what you're doing now? Are you happy? People are going to be like, of course he's going to say he likes it because he's sitting next to a guy that could say, we don't like it. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, no. But no, but seriously though, do you do you like it? I wish I could, like, if anybody doesn't believe this, then whatever. I love what I do. Yeah. Like this has become the, I mean, there's a lot of things that go into why I love what I do. We talk about, we just geek out. But I'm also here with probably the best crew ever assembled. I mean, sure, I walk in, it's, it was really easy for me. I went to dinner with Christian and Mark and they are like, there's a job opening at Collider, do you want it? Hell yeah. This is, this is the top in the game, right. you know? So of course I want to be a part of that. But then when you come in and you meet all the people here, that's one thing too. There's so many great people and it's just fun what we're doing. Yeah. So then going into like, then I'm able to jump on camera every once in a while. So that's what I love too. We launched Collider well, more than Nightmares. Once in a while, yeah, you're on Nightmares. Yeah, I mean, Nightmares you're doing, you're coming so for fun. Jedi a lot. You're mm-hmm. doing a lot of mailbag stuff. Yep. And let's not forget about the movie Trivia Schmodown. Trivia now, Schmodown. We're sitting here talking to the champion of the Schmodown, the movie yes. Trivia Schmodown. And so this all started, this movie trivia thing, back in phase five of the Schmoes No Show. Yeah. Where in 2014, we did a tournament. For those of you guys who may not know, we did a, we did a 16-week tournament. Now, when this thing started in 2014, did you know, like, did you go into it feeling pretty confident that you were going to be good, or did you not know what the hell to expect? Because you turned into, you turned into like, this kind of figure for the showdown. <laughs> I mean, I figured it would be fun. Yeah. I didn't think, I mean, I think I'd be good. I knew I was good at movie trivia, but I didn't think I'd go the whole way. Right. I think I, every time I would go, like, I would get the new, like, my first match was what? Alicia. Alicia? Yeah. So I thought she was going to run the table with me because of her knowledge with film um 
so it was just kind of like every match was just kind of like, eh, you know, if I get through this, I get through this. So it was so much fun. I mean, you know, after a while, it's like, wow, you know, oh, okay, I guess I do know movie trivia. So now it just it's become fun, and now with the new show. And the Schmodown taking over here at Collider. It's it, well. That's what I was going to say. Is because like, so it goes from because that first tournament, like, you have four matches. You win the thing, and it's like, oh, Riley wins the tournament. Riley's the champ, and then you don't really. Then we did a team tournament. You play with Dan Merle for yeah. a little bit, and then it kind of goes goes away. But then we announce that this turn this league is happening, and now. You are the the front and center. Everybody's coming after you. Yep. Is it kind of crazy? It's crazy. Yeah. And it's and I didn't think. I mean, it, it's a movie trivia show. It's fun. I didn't think there'd be pressure. I didn't think there'd be yeah. this like, oh my god. But it can like I can get like, ah oh man. It's like anxiety because there. I get people. I mean, I get fans of of Merle tagging me, and they tell me I'm gonna eat shit and die. Yeah. You know. And then I have my fans and. People that are rooting for me going, hey, yeah, yeah, and getting memes and all this stuff. It is so much fun. But man. <laughs> it, you know, it really is like you're in the UFC. Yeah. yeah and, I can't believe it. And you speak of Merle, and that's coming up on July 8th. Yeah, You man. are going to be defending this. Dude, would you say that this is possibly your toughest opponent that you've had so far? Absolutely. Yeah. It's Dan Merle. Yeah. Okay, and I, I'm not going to – there's there's no shit talk for this guy. This guy is a beast. Yeah. He is so good at what he does. That it's like it's gonna it's gonna be the hardest match because if oh man Dan Merle knows his stuff so but you're gonna, I, but you're gonna beat him I'm gonna beat him though <laughs> so, I mean I have to July, it's gonna be fun July eighth so that goes down and I think everybody's looking forward to that too because you've been like a, you've been a showman and you've been an ambassador for the sport I'm trying will. yeah um, but yeah man and then you know we talk about we had a big break as far as the schmoes. No show went for a while. We had that yeah. like, a good there four, was a long four break. five month break, and none of us knew what was going to happen there. And mm-hmm. then we all come back, and again talking about how it comes back to Collider here. What's what's the energy and the vibe you think f- from Phase Six? Is it similar to Five? Similar to Three? Like you've been through a lot. Of, you've seen this thing since it started. Like, how do you feel Phase Six is stacking up to everything else? And what's different? What's what's kind of what's the same? It's like I mean. It's different in the sense there's a new there's some you know new guys involved like Brett I'm so happy Brett's in yeah. because it goes all the way back to us talking about California Pizza Kitchen when I say that we were all friends back then we were all friends back then we were having a great time so to have Brett now and have the fans react to him right. is so amazing but there's definitely a, a feeling of it's more professional without being different yeah. does that make sense yeah. like there's there's something about it. And I got and I got lucky because I was able to come in and get my feet wet here at Collider before we launched um, Phase Six. So it was, I don't know, it just felt different. We brought in Sasha, Mirrors our producer. I don't know, it's so much fun. I just feel like we're like where we're supposed to be. Yeah. And I mean, I love it. I lo- I love the studio. I love. I mean, and I still think we're getting better. I still think every time we do a new show on Thursday nights here at Collider. We do something more that just cements it that much more. Right. So I, I couldn't be happier with it because yeah, there was a while I was so bummed for a while that we weren't coming back for. Well, everybody, I think that was the thing is that everyone felt like it was just like it was this clubhouse that we'd go to every Thursday and we'd have a lot of fun. Everybody would know whether you're the main table or the wanger crew or whoever you were, the B team at the time. But like, you, you, like everybody had the clicks that they kind of hung out with on the show, and then it was obviously the whole big family. Yeah, and that was missing. Yeah, and the Schmoville felt it. We obviously felt it, and I, I think it's been back pretty strong. It, it absolutely has, and there and there was a lot of things that happened too. Not only with with you guys and you know Mark and Christian going schmoes no coming over to Collider and kind of you know stepping in and doing like you guys hosting movie talk and the Jedi Council. But there's a lot of things that happened for the 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 crew itself, like me and Makuga and Ken Napsok and like we brought Cody over, right, you know. Right. So there's there's all these really great professional leaps that happened. Where I look around now and I go, of course, this is of course was supposed to happen, and it was supposed to happen exactly as it went. We had to go 
from Toad Hop, we had to go to After Buzz, we had to go to Popcorn Talk, do all these different things and have those great experiences to get wherever we are now. And now we're just back better than ever. I agree. I think it's been a lot of fun. We actually brought in someone very special here today to end the interview. And you guys weren't expecting this, but we actually brought in Riley's mom. Uh, Riley's mom came in. We were going to talk some movies with her. Um, Mrs. Riley, it's very nice to see you. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Is this your office? This is my office. How do you like the office? Well, I don't like that poster over there. Why not? What's wrong with that poster? Well, it's not from Star Wars. I know my son. He says that there's no such thing as Alderaan pictures. What? Well, that's actually, it's, it's called a satire, Mrs. Riley. It's all around pictures. It's, it's a spoof. Did you ever see the, the Rocky movies? No, I've never seen those. Oh, okay. Um, let's, let's go into some of your favorite. What, what, what's a movie you've seen in the theater lately, Mrs. Riley? The Departed. The Departed. And what did you think of it? That's, that, that's the most recent movie you've seen. Yeah, no, oh. it was such a good movie. Okay. The, I, I didn't get it, though. Oh, you didn't? But you still thought it was a good movie? Well, of course. It had Leo. Okay, so that doesn't matter what Leo's doing. As long as he's in it, it doesn't matter. He can be speaking Japanese. You love it. Is he Japanese? No, 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 no. I, I was just saying if he was speaking a certain language that you would love that movie because it's Leonardo. Well, yeah, and maybe if he was speaking Japanese, I'd understand it more because they'd put subtitles. That's an interesting theory. All right, so what else? What Are, do you, are you a fan of reboots? Uh, no, I don't like reboots. Why not? Well, because they, they take a story that everybody knows and right. then they try to do something different. You don't need to do that. Just go back. Just play. Why don't they just re-release the movie? The audiences will come. Uh, well, I, I I agree with some of that. I think that that the I don't think you necessarily have to remake everything. But I don't know if they're going to come back. Why can't they just watch it on Blu-ray? Do you watch Blu-rays? Well, I don't know how to work those Blu-rays oh. because the, the, the you have to plug in this thing over here, and then there's this. You got to log on to the webs, and then you have right. to turn on this right. other thing, and and then I don't know why, but my TV just you can't flip between Netflix and Blu-rays. No, well, all right. Mrs. Riley, it's a pleasure to have you here. We'll, we'll see you in phase seven. Oh, thank you very much. So is this, uh, uh, I think this is a closet. Wait, is no. this the door? Mom, no. it's over here. Oh, well, Riley will show you out. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice to have your mother back on the show. <laughs> <laughs> she actually made an appearance with a wig. One appearance. <laughs> so good. That was so I funny. I think that it still could work. I know. I, I think, I think, well, we can see what you guys think of, of, of Mrs. Riley there. Oh, they're going to love Mrs. Riley. They're, this, my mom, that is, it's, okay, the, the, <laughs> She, she doesn't sound like that. Do you however, crying, laughing at, at Umami Burger talking about that. Yes, yes, I do. Because my mom, God love her to death, but she is. She doesn't sound like that. But the questions and the randomness is all there. It yeah. can be the Departed is straight up. I finally saw the Departed today. What'd you think, Mom? I didn't get it. And it's just like, how do you not get the Departed? Okay. Yeah. My 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 mother my mother it would be one. Yeah, she, she, the things she used to say, oh, that, that's good for you. Okay. <laughs> that's my, she, the, that typical New York Italian. To yeah. Where she's, oh, really? Oh, yeah. you wouldn't be trying that with your father, would you? And Johnny <laughs> Big Balls all of a sudden. And then, it, with her movies, it's like she just got names wrong, but she didn't care. Yeah. Oh, I saw that, that, that The Martian with the Matt Damien. I mean, that's, <laughs> Damien. <laughs> it's such a good movie, but you know, I don't like his politics. Oh, God. Oh, my mom. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my, it, it took me 30 minutes to, just, to tell her that Rogue One is not a sequel to Force Awakens. Oh, my mother doesn't even know. Uh, what, they, they got the Star Wars movie? Uh, whatever. Uh, oh, I mean, I don't God. care about this. Yeah, she really did. Yeah. Couldn't get it. It's so. Julia Roberts and I. <laughs> Susan Sarandon? Nah, I don't care. Exactly. Um, but anyway, dude, it was uh, obviously a pleasure, as always, speaking to you. I'm not going to see you in probably another two minutes when we're going over our movie talk notes. Yeah, exactly. Um, anything that you want Schmoville to uh, to know about you or anything before you go out? Any dark secrets you want to tell them? God, I don't really have any. Uh, yeah. You know about my divorce now. So yeah. So there you go. It kind of, you've talked about that on the show. I have talked about my divorce. Yeah. yeah. But it's, I mean, you know, it was such a, a now looking back on it, what a speed bump. Just yeah. a big speed bump. But is it? Is it though? Because it, that's that's kind of. I was thinking about this the other day as I was driving. I don't know why I was thinking, but like just the butterfly effect yeah. in general. Because like if you don't go through that divorce, where we're sitting right now might not be happening. Like like you know, you know there's there's positives and negatives to it. Like had you not met your ex-wife, and maybe you met somebody else, and that particular person that you met might have been the love of your life. Who knows? Maybe that person got away. That's the bad part about it. The good part is that maybe you were supposed to go through all those things to be sitting exactly where you are right now. No, this is exactly why it happened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and across the board, sitting here now, job-wise, and with my relationship, my current relationship. That's the now. whole big thing. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, I don't think 
you even said it earlier that Julie, my girlfriend now, she does calm me. She's such a balancing. Right. Like if you don't go through all that shit, you don't meet Julie. Exactly. Right. No, and she like she knew it. Like and it, and of course Julie, being the little sleuth that she was, saw a picture of mine um, when we were dating. Saw that it was there was a wedding ring on uh. my finger. So she the first thing she did was like, "So were you married? Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. Great. Let's move on." So she got it, and it was like one of those. Well, you were, things. Wait, you were married at the time? No, no, no. She just saw an old picture when oh, I was oh, married. Oh, 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 that's how she found out that you had been married. That I had been yeah. married because there's a new crinkle to this story. Yeah, right. No, yeah, <laughs> I should have said because she because we did the the online thing, so we right. met that way. Right. And so when she was doing, she's like, "Let me make sure this guy's not a fucking lunatic." Right. She she looked me up on Facebook and saw like an old wedding picture, right, or right. an old wedding ring picture, and she was like. Oh, I hope he's not one of those guys. Right, right. So first thing she did was ask me and goes, okay, cool. And that's when I knew she was just, just bullshit free. Right. And, and then you knew you were going to kind of get that honesty. Yep. Um, all right, before we go, we actually do have one, uh, two more guests that just showed up in the studio. And that's uh, Sean Connery and Gary Busey are here. Um, so we're going to let them take out the show. Uh, gentlemen, uh, take it away, Mr. Connery. Look, where do you want me? Uh, sit there, sir. And then, well, uh, I'll believe that I will be standing on my head for the duration of this interview. Wait, you never said that Gary Busey was here. Uh, Out. I really enjoyed you in that movie with the dragon. The dragon is my friend and continues to live in my basement with my pet apple. The, the, you didn't tell me there was any fucking nonsense here, but fine. Good, good, let's do this. What's the equation of nonsense? Does nonsense happen to go inside of a camera that goes inside of your left earlobe when you put it on the red partial of a planet. I didn't know that they were offering drugs here at this interview. Uh, there are drugs everywhere and anywhere. If you lick the left side of a wall, you will be high for the next 12 years. Well, that what made sense in your mind, so let's do it. Um, I'm waiting for a question about the insanity of my shoelaces. Fine, I'll play. Uh, what's... What do you think of those insane uh, shoelaces there, Mr. Busey? What is the definition of insane? Do you get in? Do you know who Mr. Sane is? He was a high school teacher of mine. He used to spank me with a ruler, and he last time he did that, I ate his neck. That pretty much turned out exactly as I thought it would. All right, guys, and with that, that is the wrap-up of the Harloff Podcast. Thank you, Mark Riley. Thank you, Mr. Busey. Thank you, Mr. Connery. And thank you, Mrs. Riley. Full-stack show here on the Harloff Podcast. Join us next week when we talk to Marty McFly.